Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Bob Barber here, Entire Dream and Vision, the channel that's dedicated to the watch of dreams and visions, and how they point to the return of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Today, everybody, we are going to be talking about dreams dealing with the tribulation period. And this first one here is from Stephanie. Stephanie says, last week I had another vision that the Lord was sitting down painting something and he said, come here. I went and looked over his right shoulder that he was painting. It was a beautiful, colorful door. And on top of that door were the roots of a tree. And he said to me, those are the roots of the tree of life. And the painting was coming to life. Then God opened the door and him and I went through the door into space. He was on the right side of me now. And I seen the left side of his face as a big, beautiful, heavenly light. And I seen the word from a distance. And he pointed to the firmament and said, look, I seen two angels standing that were watching the earth. And God said to me, they are ready and nobody can see them yet. They are ready and they are there now. Tell everyone. Okay. The reason why I include this as a tribulation dream, because this is a pre-tribulation setup. Okay. When we go home, we will pass through a heavenly portal that takes us from here to the third heavens, however that works. And of course, that will be the time of the tribulation for the Jews. Okay. There are two angels that are at the ready standing there and they are ready. Ready for what? Ready for the seven-year tribulation. Okay. And I also want to add here too that these two angels can also represent the two witnesses. Because human beings can also be referred to as angels. Because you see that in the book of Revelation when Jesus addresses the seven churches. Like for example, Revelation chapter 2 verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. Or chapter 2 verse 8. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write. And then verse 12. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write. So that could be a possibility as well. Just want to mention that there. There are two angels that are at the ready standing there and they are ready. Ready for what? Ready for the seven year tribulation. Okay. They have a specific job that they are going to do, whatever that is. Well, do you remember in the book of Genesis, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah? How many angels were there that brought destruction on that city? Two. Two angels. Okay. So are these two angels the same two angels that are not, not just going to judge Sodom and Gomorrah cities, but a third of the earth, matter of fact. That's referred to all throughout the book of Revelation, which I believe personally is going to be the Western nations. A third part of the earth was destroyed. A third part of the trees burned up. A third part of the ships destroyed. You know, a third part, a third part, a third part in the book of Revelation. Are they going to elevate their work from not just destroying one city to pouring out the wrath of God and playing their role in that on a third part of the earth? Listen, everybody, time's almost up, and we are about to go home. And if you haven't done much for the Lord, and you want to make a huge impact right now, and if you're feeling led, I want to make a big impact in God's kingdom. I don't want to stand empty-handed before the BBC judgment. If that's you... Check out what we're doing here at Feed My Sheep today, okay? And I'll see you after the break. Friends, I got good news for you. The time's almost at hand. We're about to go home and rapture resurrection. It's almost time to leave, which means the time window is now closing for you to build up your eternal rewards in heaven that you will receive at the Bema Seat Judgment. Rewards that will dictate how you and your family will live forever. Because many of you probably didn't know this, God has probably called you to be a seed sower. In 1 Corinthians 3, 7 9, it talks about those who sow the seeds and those who water the seeds. It says that both of them have one purpose, and each will be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. So the seed sower and the water are co-workers together on the same project. The same project that will reward them 
there are eternal rewards. So are you a part of this one project? It doesn't matter if you're the sower or the water, just get involved in the project. Whatever you want to do, here at Feed My Sheep Today, we can make it happen for you in a big way because we already have the infrastructure in place. Over the years, we have built a huge network of waterers, which are your Christian missionaries, all over the world. These missionaries are preaching the right gospel. They're doing all the right things. They are all established. They are all established with us. They are all mobile, and they move all around their country. Everything's ready to go. All they need is just seed. So, no matter what size seed you sow here, it is immediately spread out into all those high-impact watering areas, the best fertile ground where nothing will be wasted, where you will see the maximum results of the growth of the body of Christ. And what our missionaries will do exactly is they will be purchasing and distributing KJV English Bibles so the people that can't read English and will also buy and distribute Bibles in their own native languages. And we will be distributing those Bibles for free to those who come to the belief in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And those people will come to that belief through the preaching from the missionary and the missionary's team and also through audio-visual presentations that will also be presented at those times that help explain the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ and the gift of salvation that came with it. On top of all this, we will also be bringing food, water, blankets, medical supplies, all the humanitarian relief aid that we will need to help the people in these hard to reach areas. We're not going into the cities and all that stuff, everybody. We're going into those forgotten places where nobody wants to help these poor people who barely have enough money to put an extra shirt on their back. We come into these areas and we try to help these people as much as we can before the preaching begins. And that's just the right thing to do. On top of all this, Feed My Sheep Today also supports orphanages in many different countries throughout the world. You will be able to feed children, give them food, clothing, education, shoes, hygiene products, provide them beds, and much, much more. So there is so much going on right now in all the different facets of Feed My Sheep today. So when you sow your seed, you can be rest assured that great things will be generated from it. So all of you who have given before, please, we need your help right now. All you people who have never given before, this is what you do. You go to our website, feedmysheeptoday.org. Link is below. This is a very user-friendly website. Just choose how you want to give. You can give by PayPal, credit card, bank draft. Click on the amount you want to give or enter a custom amount. Or just simply send your gift in the mail. You want to make a real big difference over time? Then would you please consider joining our monthly sustainer program? You could change the world with just $10 a month. That will purchase three new Bibles for three new believers every month. Or perhaps you want to do more. That will be greatly welcomed. Any amount is so greatly appreciated here. And any of you out there that want to support the orphanages, please even consider giving $100 a month because that amount will purchase a whole new bed for an orphan. This includes the frame, the mattress, the sheets, the blankets, the pillows, everything. Just go to feedmysheeptoday.org and everything you need is right there. And while you're there, check out the pictures, check out the videos, check out the articles, check out everything. And folks, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can keep track of everything that's going on with the funding that comes into this ministry. You can change the world in a godly way, starting with Feed My Sheep today. Thank you so much, everybody, for stepping forward and making a difference in Christian missions today. We can't do what we do unless it wasn't for you. Bibles cost money. It costs money to put gas in the cars, to buy the food, to buy hygiene supplies, to buy beds for orphans. Nobody gives us anything for free. <laughs> and it's just the way it is, man. And... Money is needed in order to do the Lord's work. Well, not all the Lord's work, but some portions like this, it takes money to do it. And God has led many of you great folks to step forth and help out with what you can. And some of you have given small, some of you have given big. And I tell you what, it's all greatly appreciated right now. 
So if there's any of you out there who are feeling that tug right now, please don't ignore it. Just go to Heavenly Father in prayer and see what he wants you to do. We greatly appreciate all you givers out there. And just keep in mind, all of you who have given, who have received messages from us, keep in mind, all those messages are from me personally. I see all your names. I do all that stuff. Okay, so every time you receive a message from Feed My Sheep Today, it's from me personally. Okay, so thank you all so much for your much, much needed support. Great in heaven will your rewards be. And I can't wait to see you receive them for everything that's achieved here at Feed My Sheep Today. The next one here is from Lori. Lori says, when I woke, I knew the Lord had once again shown me something. So I asked him to remind me what he has shown me. He opened my heart once again. Multitudes of rats rushing towards me with their teeth showing. I wanted to get away from them thinking that they might bite me. But they called up to me. They did not harm me. An intense understanding came to me that they had no food at all. They were starving. I received a strong understanding that they had no way of getting food. There was no food for them to eat at all. Famine on the earth. You know, when there's no food to eat where the rats are even starving, that's bad. And of course, during the seven-year tribulation, that will be the case. Okay, for many different reasons. Hyperinflation everything. Okay, your best bet. If you get left behind, you better know how to grow food. Just saying. I know you're going to have storable food for a while, but eventually that's only going to carry you so far. And that is if no one shows up at your house, puts a gun to your head, and takes all your stuff. So if you get left behind, you know what I recommend doing? Taking all your food, burying it in your backyard. You bury it somewhere in totes. And that way you can pull, dig it up and use it as you need it. Okay. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm not going to be left behind here because I'm sealed in the body of Christ. Amen. So famine, no food. This next one is from Daniel. Daniel says, I saw many people dying by some type of a wind. In my dream, I was in a city next to a beach and the place was very similar to Chicago. People were running in panic and screaming seconds before a harsh wind destroyed everything that was around. Nevertheless, that same wind made me sore instead of killing. It guided me first to outer space where I asked it to stop. The wind harshly flew me into the single boat that survived the attack. I didn't know about justification by faith alone at this time. Nevertheless, a local church, a friend of mine, recommended me, taught me about the doctrine a few days later. The justification by grace through the works of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Read it. Okay, so here there was a wind that came and destroyed everything, a wind of fire. And I believe it has everything to do with these four angels that are released in the book of Revelation 9.15. And these angels were prepared for an hour, prepared for a day, a month, and a year, for to slay the third of mankind. And I'm wondering if this wind has anything to do with it. Did they take wind some type of solar wind or something from the sun and wind it up and, you know, use it in a certain way. I don't know. Okay. That's beyond my pay grade. <laughs> All that could do is speculate. Okay. But be it as it may, I believe this will definitely happen. There will be a supernatural hot wind from the sun, a solar flare or something that will just, it's not just going to mess up electronics. It's going to be super hot and something's going to happen. Perhaps the earth shields will be down and people are just going to get fried by this thing. Okay. You ever seen that movie, The Core, when people got all burned up and that, uh, that, that um, microwave that came through the earth's atmosphere that tore right through that bridge and killed all those people. Okay. That can happen. In fact, that's probably what's going to happen. So Daniel goes on to say here that he was also removed by this harsh wind that showed up. And of course, that is a parallel of the rapture resurrection. So everybody, please comment. Let us know what you guys think about these dreams. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the way out. So you don't miss any new content that we have coming out. May God bless you all and hang in there for we are almost finished. Amen. Amen.